In this video, I'll introduce a tool that you can use to make floor plans like this one, this one, and even this one in just a few minutes with just a few clicks. Now this tool is called Rayon and it's free. So here in this video, Scott will create this office plan with all of its details. And you can also follow along using the Rayon design tool if you want to make the same office plan yourself. Now the link is in the description. So sign up to create a free account and let's get started. In this comprehensive tutorial, I'll show you step by step how we can make a floor plan in Rayon or Ryan.design, depending on how you pronounce it. And you can go ahead and sign in, create a free account. And then once you sign in, you'll be taken to your dashboard, which looks like this. Now, I've already created this small office floor plan, and I'm going to double click on that to go into it. And I'll just show you what our end result is. This is the goal of what we'll be doing in this particular video. So I'm going to start from scratch and recreate this with you. I'll go back home and create a new model. Now over here, we could start completely from scratch by clicking new. But in this case, I'm going to start with a CAD drawing that I'd like to import. And you can import DWG or DXF vector formats. You can also import PDF, JPEG, and PNG. Just click import and select the shell drawing. It's going to upload that DWG file, and then it prompts us to select a scale. Basically, we need to choose a kind of order of magnitude of scale for this model. So here's the shell. And this distance, what is that? Is that 300 feet? Is it 100 feet? Or is it possibly 8 foot 4? Now, I know that this is a door opening, and it's double doors, which are approximately 6 feet wide, more or less. And this, to me, looks like it's maybe a little longer. So eight foot four looks like it's correct. I'll select that and say import. It's going to create that as a model. And in a moment, it will be ready. And we can see that right here. I can double click on the new model here to open it. And there it is. Let's just verify the door opening distance. I'll use this command here, distance, DI. It's the keyboard shortcut. And I can click these two points and that's six foot 3.2 inches, which is about right for a pair of doors to enter the space. So I think our scale is correct. And over here, we can change the units. Imperial is feet and inches. I'm going to go with just inches in this case for now. We can always change the scale very easily just by ch changing the choice there. This is object snap over here. You can toggle it on and off. And choose the different snap modes that are available. This is very much like AutoCAD, by the way. Over here, we have different uh, tools we can use to draw with. And here we have walls, which is what we're going to do in a moment. But before we dive into that, let's take a look at the layers up here. So right now we have my layer, which is current, and we have import. And I can toggle import off and on, and you can see that the imported geometry is indeed on this layer. Let's just keep that in mind in the future. My layer is current. I'm going to rename that by right clicking on it and then I'll just type walls. This layer will contain the walls that I plan to draw now. So I can go ahead and use the walls tool right here. The keyboard shortcut is W. And then right here we have the active style and I can click on this to make a change. I'd like to make this thicker at 11.8 inches. You have these presets here at different sizes, and you can specify your own size right here. If you want to type in something, you can. I'll stick with the default wide wall for the exterior, and I'm going to change the style name in a moment, but I'm also going to make a choice here under fill. Right now there's a white fill. I'll use a light gray fill. And I don't need to change anything else. I'll leave everything else at the default. Then up here, I'm going to change the name. And it, won't, it actually won't let me change it because it's a default. Fair enough. 
I'll leave it as it is and go ahead and draw in a wall. Down here we can choose different alignment options, left, center, or right. You can also just type the keyboard shortcuts. I'll type L for left. And then click here and draw the wall around the perimeter and click right back where I started to complete the walls. Looks like I have five different segments. Each is a separate object that can be toggled on and off. And they're all in the walls layer. When I click off to the side, it deselects everything. But I can no longer see the imported geometry because the fill on the walls is obscuring the imported geometry below. So if I want to see this, I can drag it above walls in the stack. And then I can see that here. I'll also lock this layer so that I don't accidentally erase anything or move anything that was imported. But this will give us a sense of where the windows and the doors have to go. All right, so let's go to the next item up here, blocks. And this shows us that we don't have any blocks in our model yet. I'll go to library and load some blocks. In this case, I'm interested in windows. And this will show us everything that's tagged with windows. And that includes some doors that have glazing and other items. I'll choose this sliding window 1000 and import that into my model and close the library and then drag and drop this block into the model and you can resize it, you can rotate it, and you can move it around just by dragging and dropping. And watch what happens now if I drag and drop it into the wall here. It automatically embeds itself in the walls that I've drawn. I can then resize it to fit the situation. I can then copy this to the clipboard by right-clicking and then right-click again and say paste. And it makes a copy adjacent to this that's offset a bit. I can then drag this copy down here and drop it in the wall. And so in this way, I can use keyboard shortcuts to copy and paste and really make quick work of adding a bunch of windows to the plan. You can also just drag this out and drop it in if that's more convenient than copying and pasting a window that you've already placed in a wall. And I'll do one more here. And you can be more accurate if you want by zooming in and fine tuning the sizes of things. And to do that, you hold down the control key and roll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Or if you're on a trackpad, you just pinch your fingers closer together or farther apart to zoom in and out. To pan, you drag the mouse wheel or drag two fingers on a trackpad. So it's very intuitive. And in this way, I can snap things more accurately when I can see them up close. I'll just zoom back out and continue adding windows. Observe that the window automatically reorients itself according to however the wall segment is oriented. So it's very, very convenient. In, in terms of uh, ease of use. It's very intuitive. And I can make really quick work of a floor plan, in this case, the shell, just by dragging these, um, these blocks out onto the places where we have windows. And I just have two left. So after this, we're going to build some interior partitions. And they're gonna be thinner than these. But I'll go back to layers, and you can see that we have a bunch of windows and walls now. I can collapse this up here. And I no longer need the imported uh, layer. I can turn that off. Imported blocks was automatically created. Note that I didn't make that layer. It was generated when we started inserting these windows and doors. Or windows, rather. We do need doors right down here. So let's find some doors. Library, doors. I'm going to scroll down here and locate the US 36 inch door. And I'll keep scrolling. And I'll also select the US 72 inch double door and import both blocks. Close the library. Drag the double doors in and drop them. And then drag them into the wall here. And then I can flip them so that this, they swing outward by using these icons right below here. 
Incidentally, you can also rotate items with this tool in 90 degree increments. Okay, now I'd like to draw some interior partitions. So I'll go back to the wall tool, change the active style to this one here, which is 3.9 inches. I will also change the fill to white. And then I'll come up here and edit this and call it interior walls. Enter. And then back, close that. And I'll draw in some interior walls like this. And I can come down here and acquire this point as a tracking point, And then I can click here and draw it right down there. And then when I want to stop drawing, I can press escape to cancel out of the command. I'm going to navigate in here and just take a closer look at what I've drawn. So here, this is snapping to the corner from the center of this wall. I can change the justification option over here. And I can also move the wall dynamically by dragging it. I'm going to undo that, though. I can select the wall and use the, the left arrow key to do that as well. But in this case, none of these things are really what I want. I'm going to pull this wall out of here and then pull this one over. And everything heals automatically. I can drag this down. And then I can use the right arrow key to move that over. And if I want to be really accurate, I can use the Move tool here and pick it up from here and snap it there precisely. So you, you always have precision as an option here, but sometimes just dragging a wall is really all you need to do in your space planning. All right, I could use another wall right about here maybe to separate these into two different spaces. And I'd like this to be a conference room and this to be a private office. So the conference room could use double doors, and maybe those doors should swing the other way. I'd like to line the doors up with this wall. So I might draw a temporary line from the midpoint straight up. And then I can select this and move it and snap it exactly to that line. And then I can erase the line. And now we need some furnishings in here to represent the conference room. So I'll go to the library. I'll type in office. We have a lot of blocks to choose from. We also can explore libraries. I'll use libraries and I'll go to office space. And then in here, we have a lot of good choices for commercial interiors. I'll choose various items that I'm going to just select as I go down this list. And you don't need to worry about selecting too many. In fact, you can load them all in if you like. Um, I'm just going to make a, a bit of more of a individual selection. And all of the things that you select will be loaded into the model. And it does take up space. So you can remove unused blocks later on if you like. I'll import these seven and close the library browser. And then I can use this as my conference setup. And if I want to be accurate again, I could do so by drawing in a temporary line. And then I can move this conference room table and chairs to be exactly lined up and erase the line. And then over here, we could use a single chair and desk. And we might also want to have a couple of guest chairs here. And I'll just copy and paste this one over here. And I can rotate that one. Just it's not so rigid. And here we need a door. I'll flip it over. Now that we have a couple of enclosed rooms, I'd like to create zones inside of them. And the zone tool is located right here underneath wall. And the way that this tool works is very straightforward. You click inside an enclosed space to create a zone. And the zone consists of an area object and a tag that reports on that area. I'll repeat the command and click in this adjacent room to create another zone. And then I'll press escape to end the zone tool. 
I have zone 1 here, but it's hard to read because this tag is right on top of the table. I'm going to drag this out of the way. And then in the text editor, I'll just highlight the name zone 1 and change that to conference. And then click outside of the text editor to end the command. And then over here, I'll do the same thing. I'll move this out of the way. And I'll call this office. Now I'm not used to thinking of areas in terms of square inches, so I'll change the units from inches to feet, and the tags automatically update. I'd also like to change the way that these zones are shown. Right now it's a partially transparent blue. I'll click on this zone and edit its style over here. I'm going to change this to maybe a texture map, and I can go ahead and choose different textures here. And you can access additional textures by clicking right here. And I think the conference room would make sense if it had some kind of carpet. So I'll use soft flooring and I'll click on this first swatch for this beige carpet. I'll also edit that texture map right here and increase the scale. And then it says copy of default. I'm going to edit this and change this to beige carpet and press enter for the rename to take effect. And then I can close and then go over here and select this zone. And then when I change its style, all I have to do is select beige carpet from my recent styles. And I don't have to go through the process of specifying the texture map or anything else. So up here, we're probably going to have a string of offices. So I'll draw in some walls a wall all the way across like that, press escape, and draw in another wall about here, escape, and I'll press the spacebar to repeat the last command, and then escape to end it, and then the spacebar to repeat. And in this way, you can start to get into a rhythm of how you're drawing things. Now, I'm not really sure about these rooms yet, but I think this is a good place for a bunch of uh, enclosed spaces. And down here, this will be a, a open office, and then there'll be a reception area over here. So let's work on the open office next. Here, I'm going to go to blocks, and I'm going to locate the item here, which has got three desks arranged in this triangular pattern. I think that will make an interesting uh, set up here for an open office. So I'm positioning this right over the center of these doors below, and you see how it, it snaps in there. It wants to snap there. Now I'd like to make an arrangement of these desks to fill up this open office space. So what I might do is draw in some construction geometry to help me. I'll use the line tool, and I'll start by drawing a line right from the center over to the right. And I'd like that to be a set distance, maybe about 16 feet. So I'll type 16 feet, enter, and then that's locked that down right here. And now it's asking me for the angle. So I can specify that anywhere. What I want to do is just click right here to specify zero degrees as the angle. And then I can use this line to help me plan out my strategy. I'll take this block and copy it from the end of the line to the other end. And then I'll press Escape. Now, that's fine. There's enough space between them, it looks like. But I'd like to have another desk up here, in between them. And it would be nice if there, these three desks were all equally spaced. So I'm sort of talking about an equilateral triangle here. And there's no polygon tool but we can create that easily enough by drawing a couple of circles. I can draw a circle here, and I can draw another circle here. That identifies this intersection point above as the point of interest. So I can then select this desk and copy it up to this intersection point. Now I can erase this construction geometry. Now what if I want another desk over here? that's 16 feet over. Well, I can select this and copy it and pick it up from here and place it down there and then press Escape. Now this arrangement works fine here, 
And I'd like to preserve this spatial arrangement. So I'll select all the desks and then make a group so that they behave as one unit. So now I can move this unit around if I feel that it would fit in the space a little better. I can nudge it over in this area. Okay, now to separate this open office from the reception, I'd like to go with some kind of interesting curvilinear wall. So I can sketch that in with the curve tool. I'll just start up here and click some points to establish a kind of sinuous curve. And then I'll right click and say validate command to complete it. And then I can go into edit mode. And then here I have even finer control over the shape of the curve. I can select these anchor points and move them around. I can also use these handles to affect the shape of the curve as it passes through these anchor points. But the way that these are set up by default, it allows you to create these cusps or sharp points. And that's not what I want. So I'll select this anchor point here and change its type from independent, which is what it is now, to mirrored. And that mirrors these handles across equally so that they behave as one. So in this way, I can really shape the curve the way that I want. And what I'm aiming for here is probably really nice, smooth curves that don't have any cusps in them, for example. OK, I'll go with that shape. And then to make that into something like a wall, I can select it and then use offset. And then I'll offset that some distance. Let's say it's going to be 0.5 feet. I'll press Enter, Enter to complete the command. And then down here, we need to terminate this with a line. So I'll draw a simple line connecting those points. And then up here, it looks like we need to trim away. We can't use walls to trim. So what I'm going to do is temporarily hide this by selecting it and pressing the hide button here. And then I can draw in a line like this. And then I will use trim. And the way that trim works is you select everything involved in the trimming operation and you say done. And then you click on the item that you want to cut away. I'll undo by pressing control Z. Click on this part and this part to trim them away. And then click done again. And then in this case, I don't really need this line because the wall that's there will do that job for me. But now I'd like to redisplay that wall, but it's hidden. So I need to go back to layers, open up walls, and scroll through the list here and try to find the item that is grayed out. And here it is. You can see it. Turn it back on here. So I can zoom back out now. And we have our curvilinear wall. Next up, let's start to plan this space out. I'm going to put in a reception desk that looks like this. And I can just position it opposite the door and orient it in such a way that it lines up. Incidentally, you can come over here and go to transform and you can use these numbers. So maybe it's minus 66.7 is what I'm guessing here. No, I don't think so. I think it's more, more like this. All right, now what about an area to relax when you're waiting for um, an appointment? We need some lounge chairs for that. And perhaps we need a table. We don't have a table here. So I'll go back to library, search for tables. I will find a table. I think just one of these, um, something that's round perhaps will work. I'll go with this elliptical table, I guess. Put this in. And then I can orient that and plan out a little seating group here. Copy and paste. Great. And if I want, I can group those together 
so that they can be managed as a unit, like so. All right, now let's start to uh, consider these spaces. So we need a way in to each one, which requires a door. I can flip that. I can take another door, flip it, and undo. I want to be careful not to stretch it. So over here, this could be an office, but it doesn't have any windows. So I think it would be better, perhaps, if it was a storage area. I'll type in storage. And I can position this, or I can rotate it here and get it where I need it to be. Copy and paste, rotate, reposition. And so we can fill out a space easily enough. Perhaps we don't need this much room for the storage room. So this is what's really great about this is how easy it is to reconfigure spaces as you're figuring out how to use your uh, the available space that you have. All right, now over here we might use maybe this quad desk arrangement. Maybe I'll rotate that and something like that might work. Here I'll just copy and paste and put in a door. Over here, let's say this is maybe this is a break room or something. So how am I going to do that? I don't really want to have doors here. I just want this to be open. So I'm going to drag this wall back like that and then draw in another wall. And then I can take this new wall and pull it back. Undo. I don't want these to be connected. There we go. So we have an opening now. Great. So you can just walk right into the break room. What do we need in the break room? We need a kitchenette. So I'll type in kitchen. And let's see if we can find one that would suit. Perhaps this one. So I can just drag this in. Reorient. And if you reorient this way, you're, you're dragging arbitrarily. So undo. In this case, I want to rotate it 90. So this is a better bet here. Just clicking this button. Here I'm going to right click and unblock it and then ungroup it. Basically, I want these to be separate. Now here, this case, it's not snapping to the wall. So I need to do that explicitly by moving that as a separate step. We could also use a refrigerator. And I'll select this and import it. I'll rotate it, position it. And now we have the makings for a break room. Now over here, I think we can have some uh, washrooms. Um, and let's see what we have here. I'll type in wash room and we get nothing. So maybe it's using the American restroom. Yes. So I can find something that would work. Let's see. We have different elements individually, but we also have these interesting um, layouts that we might want to use, such as, let's see what we have here. This one here I'll use. So I'm going to import that, drag it or drop it over here, maybe rotate it. And I think we'll use that. I will use the move tool to grab it and move it exactly. And zoom in closer. Didn't quite have it there. Move from here to here. And then again, move from here to here. So now it's lined up perfectly. We have room for a wheelchair here. That's what this is. And we have room to turn around a wheelchair as well. And I can right click on this and unblock it. And then I have access to the individual components within. And this gives me a good sense of the minimum clearances that I need. So I can draw another wall, right justified from here, actually left justified. Yeah, like that, down. We can put in a door. I need to rotate that and maybe flip it over the other way. And then uh, we'll have a partition going across. And I want to make sure that's lined up properly. So 
I'm going to zoom in here and move this precisely to there. So we know that everything will adhere to code because I've lined everything up. Now I should be able to select these elements. I'll hold down the shift key to select them individually. And then I will copy these elements down below. So it looks to me that we need a little more room. So I'm going to take this wall and move it down a little bit. Undo. I don't want to thicken the wall. I just want to move the whole wall down. So I need to wait until my cursor looks like that. And then I can move the whole wall down. So this looks like the wall has to be sort of tangent to that circle there. So I can use, perhaps I'll use the arrow keys just to nudge this up. And that looks like it is clear. And so that would work like so. Except this wall really needs to stop here. And then we need another wall that works like this. OK, so we have room for those two accessible restrooms. And that has affected the curved wall here slightly. So what I could do here is draw in a line across here and again hide this wall. Select these elements and trim them, accepting the choice of objects, and then right, do that again. Trim, get these objects, accept that, and then I need to click on the elements that I wish to remove. There we go. I don't think I need this line in particular. Then I need to go back, as I've done before, and locate the hidden wall and turn it back on. There we go. All right, so I think my, my plan is nearing completion, but I would like to define some more zones and put some labels in. So one thing we need to do is separate this break room from the open office. And we do that through the use of a zone divider. And you just draw that in here and it connects. Now, undo. I noticed that we have a disjoint because of the way that we adjusted the, the restrooms, this is no longer lined up. So what I need to do is draw in a temporary line like that. Then I can select this whole wall system and move it down. Now everything is lined up again. So now I can go back in and use a zone divider to draw in this line right down the center line there. And that creates a, what it does is it creates a barrier so that um, we can create different zones in these different spaces. And also, this whole open office doesn't recognize this curved line at all as a zone partition. So we need to add our own zone divider in here. And unfortunately, the zone divider tool only works with straight segments. So what we'll do is just kind of trace out a polygonal shape. And you can be as detailed as you want, clicking, you know, hundreds of points if you want to have, you know, total accuracy. But here I'm just going to kind of approximate this zone, right click and then say validate command to define that as a zone boundary. Okay, so now I should be able to add zones and they should indeed separate into these different spaces. So all you have to do is click to insert the zone and then press the space bar to repeat the command and click again to add another zone. I notice over here that it did not um, allow me to separate these rooms. And I think the reason is that this wall does not connect properly with the other one. So if I drag that up, it should now work correctly. Yes. OK, so now I'd like to start to customize the zones. So here in zone three, I'd like to change the pattern. So I'll go to style and change this to hatch. I'll try this hexagonal pattern and I'll also colorize it. And we can tone down the opacity of that by making a choice from this list. I will also click on the tag and call this open office. And then moving on over here, 
I will go ahead and change this to the beige carpet. And I'll rename this storage. And over here, we have a tag which is overlapping the desk. I'll move that over and call this dual office and give it the beige carpet also. The next tag needs to be moved over and I'll call this one quad office and then give it beige carpet. And then over here we have a break room. So I'm going to move this tag over. And we wouldn't want to have carpet in there. Instead, I'm going to change the style to something with a hatch pattern. And I like that default tile pattern right there. I'll stick with that, but I'll rename this tiled and press enter to accept that as the name. And then I can close this. And over here in the restrooms, I can select both of them by holding down the control key. I can, or rather the shift key, I can get them both. And then change the style to tiled. I'll also zoom in there by holding down the control key and rolling the mouse wheel. And then I can uh, rename this and move it. And I'll call this one RR-1. And this will be RR2. And I'll also move this out of the way. Great, and then I'll just zoom out and pan and rename this reception and change the pattern here to a new style that we haven't represented previously. So this one is going to use a texture map and I'll use this chevron pattern and click on edit and increase the scale so it's more evident here. I'll rename that it's, it's the default zone, so I can't rename that. I've actually edited the default uh, zone pattern. So I can replace that style with a new one. And we'll go ahead and add the fill back and just go through the process again. And now I have the opportunity to rename that and call it hardwood floor. Enter. There we go. So I've fully customized the, the zones in the model and made this a much more readable space plan. The Pages tab allows you to create pages for export. So I'll click plus here to create a page. Select it by clicking on it right here. And then over in the Properties palette, you can change the format. This is the page size. I'll go with Letter Size. And that essentially locks in the proportion. And then you can just navigate as normal and move this around and resize it, and the proportion will be maintained. So you can move this around. So this represents the, the actual sheet of paper that we will be exporting. And you can have multiple different layouts here. So I could have another page, and on this page, I could change the orientation, let's say, to portrait, and then I can just navigate. And this is an A4 right now, so I'm gonna change that to, let's say, legal. And then I can go ahead and change the way that that interacts with the, the information that I want to display. I can use the arrow keys to nudge that, and the proportion will be maintained. If you want to have free proportions, then you can go to free down here, and then that will allow you to change the aspect ratio by changing the, the sizes here. I can go ahead and make that any aspect ratio that I want. And then when you go ahead and export, you have a choice of exporting that in ping or PDF, and it will save your, um, your pages in a zip file. In this case, it's a couple of, of ping files that are in there because that's what I chose up here. You can also get data out of your model. So that can be done through tables here. So for example, I'm gonna zoom back in. Let's say I wanna have a, a table that shows all the different um, zones with their areas. I'll click plus here and then click plus on the header and choose area. And this will give us all this information. Unfortunately, it doesn't alphabetize it correctly. Um, zone 10 ends up being inserted between zones one and two. Uh, this is a common kind of numerical problem with uh, alphabetizing. 
But what you can do is export this to CSV or XLSX and clean this up in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, for example. And then finally, there's the comments page. And here we can add comments of our own, and we can also share this with others and get their comments and to create a collaboration environment. So I can add a comment here. It says, click on Canvas to insert comment. Let's say I'm going to add one right over here. And I'll say, do you approve of this layout for this seating group? And I can then post that. And so this has my name on it, and it has this comment and the number one. And so when I share that, other people will be able to see it. And I can do that by clicking share. And then I can invite others within my company here, and I can put their email addresses in, and I can choose the level of access that they have, just viewer, editor, or an admin. And then if I want to share this with people outside my company, I can enable this down here, and then I can copy this web link to my clipboard and share that with someone in an email, for example. I've logged in with the share link under another user's account. So I'm acting as Jennifer at the moment. So from Jennifer's perspective, she's in viewer mode. It says that right up here. Now, that means that we have a subset of the tools down below. We can select, comment, annotate, measure distances and areas. But that's it. We could optionally ask to edit the model, in which case an email would be sent to the creator of the model. And if they approve, then Jennifer would get the full, app, the full tool, toolbar down below. But there's something nice about just being in viewer mode and being asked to comment on something. This is a great kind of collaboration feature. So if I zoom in here on you know, comment number one, I can see over here that Scott has said, do you approve of this layout for this seating group? And Jennifer replies and says, um, not, no, please uh, two more chairs, opposite. Okay, and then what else can I think of here? Well, Jennifer might notice that these areas are kind of empty. So maybe she will go ahead and use an annotation here. And the way that this works is you can draw freely on the canvas to make kind of redlining. I'll do some redlining here. And then I'll click OK to do that. And that shows up as a comment, but without any text. So what I could do is add comments as well. I could click in here and say, add a potted plant here and um, in the opposite corner of the lobby, like that. And now I'll go back to the other browser window where I'm logged in as myself, as Scott, and I'm seeing the red lines that Jennifer made. And I can also read her comments here. So what I can do is make these changes. So right here, I need to add two more chairs opposite. I'll edit this group, copy and paste this chair in place, and then rotate it, make another copy, and just arrange things around this uh, oval coffee table. I'll say done to close the group. And then she asks for a potted plants. So I can go to blocks, library, plants. And let's see what we have in here for plants. The phylodendron, and I'll add a couple of plants. And then I can go to layers and make sure I'm on the right layer. Maybe what I could do is go to imported blocks and set that as the active layer, and then go back to blocks and drag in plants. And I can scale them and get phylodendron and put that over here maybe, and arrange it. And then I can go to the comments page, and I've taken care of these issues. So what I can do is say resolve comment, and the tag disappears, it no longer says two there. These I've also, these are the circles that I've, uh, the red linings that I have resolved. And this as well, I've resolved this too. 
I could delete the entire thread because I'm the creator of it, but I can also just say resolve comment so that we maintain this history here and these are checked off. So in this way, you can easily collaborate with your colleagues. You can be anywhere in the world and work on the same project together. It's really fantastic how intuitive this program is to use and how you can easily create professional quality plans and space plans using this tool set. So I hope you like it as much as I do. Go ahead and check it out at rayon.design. So that's how easy it is to create a flow plan using Rayon. If you haven't tried it yet, you should definitely give it a shot. Once again, the link is in the description of this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.